EVA Airways. Yes, that's apparently how you say it. I also just learned that from their safety video. EVA Airways is the second largest airline headquartered on the island of Taiwan behind China Airlines. They are owned by the Evergreen Corporation, which is mostly known for their ocean shipping division. Today, however, we'll travel a bit more comfortably than a container. We'll fly in economy class aboard the state-of-the-art Boeing 787 Dreamliner off EVA Airways. I'll keep referring to them as EVA Air for the rest of the video because that's just what I'm used to, even if it might be wrong. We're flying on EVA Air from Vienna to Bangkok. And you might be surprised to see them offering a flight to Thailand instead of Taiwan. And that has a historical reason behind it. You see, when EVA Air started operations in 1991, planes were not yet able to fly non-stop from Taiwan to Europe, so they had to make a stop somewhere. And EVA Air settled on Bangkok as that somewhere because the Thai government allowed them to transport passengers between Thailand and Europe, something that is known as a fifth freedom right. And the business went so well that they just kept these flights and to this day offer non-stop flights from Vienna, Amsterdam and London Heathrow to Bangkok, from where you can continue on to Taipei. In the meantime, they did also add a number of non-stop flights from Europe to Taipei, namely from Paris, Charles de Gaulle and Vienna, and since 2022, also from Milan and Munich. Vienna is actually the only European destination connected by EVA Air non-stop to both Bangkok and Taipei, and it has a special significance in EVA Air's network as it was its first long-haul destination back in 1991, and in Vienna, no foreign airline has operated long-haul flights to the airport continuously for longer than they have. So let's take a flight on EVA Air's first long-haul route from Vienna to Bangkok to see what this 5-star airline's economy class has to offer. We're starting the journey off in the city of Vienna, from where I'm taking a railjet, one of Austria's high-speed trains, to the airport, which takes roughly 15 minutes if you're departing from the central station and costs around 4 euros. That ride puts you right beneath Vienna Airport, from where it's an easy 5-minute walk to the check-in area in Terminal 3. Thanks to my Star Alliance Gold status, I get to use the priority check-in desk, skipping the already surprisingly long line. Of course, I arrived way before the check-in even opened because I'm a sucker for lounge access thanks to my status. After dropping off the bag and getting the boarding pass, it was over to Terminal 2 for the security check. This terminal was refurbished over the past two years and now features a brand new central security screening area, replacing the awful security checks they did directly at the gates in the past. Even though Vienna Airport has never been blessed with intelligently designed terminal buildings, they certainly made the most of what they had design-wise. I love the ceiling of the duty-free area, which features the colors and patterns that you might recognize from the roof of St. Stephen's Cathedral, one of the main landmarks of Vienna. The refurbished terminal also features a brand new lounge, which, thanks to people I know at Vienna Airport, I had been invited to to be part of the official photo shoot, so you can see me in the background on some of the advertising. That's why my opinion of this lounge is also completely biased. But for real, that's a pretty sweet lounge, isn't it? Enough about the airport, let's head to our departure gate. As I mentioned before, this flight operates not to Bangkok, but rather via Bangkok to Taipei. This means that if you book the trip all the way to Taipei, you do have to get off the plane in Bangkok and due to some design limitations of the terminal at Suvarnabhumi Airport, you can't deboard directly into the gate area, you have to go through the same process there as any other transferring passenger, which means also clearing security again. For those traveling just to Bangkok though, like I am, it's like every other normal flight. Our ride to Bangkok today is B, 17802, a 2019 build Boeing 787-10, one of 13 Dreamliners in EVA Air's fleet, four of which are the smaller 787-9, which we have also covered both in economy and business class back in 2019, when the Vienna office of EVA Air invited me to come along a press trip to Taiwan, when they first started long-haul operations with their Dreamliners, because Vienna was also the first intercontinental destination of their new 787s. EVA Air 787-10 has only two classes, a 34-seat business class in the front between doors 1 and 2, 
followed by a 308-seat economy class cabin on the rest of the plane, featuring a 333 configuration, which you'll find on basically all aircraft of this type. My seat on this 10-hour flight will be 47k, a window seat in the rear of the plane, which I have reserved during booking as I always do. However, unfortunately Eva Air changed some policies last year and started charging extra for all seat reservations in economy class, regardless of booking class or frequent flyer status, having charged me a whopping 40 euros to reserve a seat on this flight. Seat selection is still available at check-in, but of course that always depends on what's still available. For the economy class cabin of the Boeing 787, Eva Air has decided on the CL3710 seat, made by German manufacturer Recaro. This is a very popular type of seat and is in use at more than 40 different airlines across both twin aisle and single aisle planes. Last year I've actually had the honor to fly in this seat on an Airbus A320 on a flight aboard Gulf Air from Frankfurt to Bahrain, so check out that episode of Brutally Honest as well if you want to see how great a single aisle plane can be if you put the right seats into it. Here at EVA Air, there are a few things waiting on the seat already, including a sanitizing wipe, a pair of headphones, a pillow with a cover made of real fabric and not the scratchy single-use covers many other airlines use, always appreciate those much softer high-quality covers, as well as a sizable blanket. Every seat has a headrest which can be adjusted both vertically as well as on the sides. The legroom offered in economy class is very impressive and with my height of 180 centimeters, I feel very comfortable here. The seat back pocket has these little extra pockets which I always find very useful for things like your phone. And above that you'll find a tray table which can be used half opened or fully opened, as well as an adjustable entertainment screen. Beneath the screen you'll find a USB port to charge smaller devices as well as the audio port. And on the side of the seat a coat hook so you can neatly hang something like a suit jacket. There is another storage space between the tray table and the screen where you can put things like magazines or tablet computers. Beneath the seats you'll also find universal power outlets, two per each three seats. Like all Boeing 787s, this one too has the dimmable windows, which means no more window shades. Now we're pushing back and are getting ready for takeoff. Today's flight is almost fully booked with only a handful of seats still empty. 
So before dinner service, let's take a brief look at the lavatory. A variety of lotions as well as sanitizing gel are offered, alongside little cups for when you're brushing your teeth, and hand and face tissues. Eva Air's crews are incredibly efficient. We're, we've just been in the air for like 15 minutes and they're already getting ready to serve dinner service. So we're going to be able to get a lot of sleep on this flight because the meal service is going to be over in no time. Oh, how wrong I was with this statement though. You see an almost full 787-10 with over 300 seats in economy class alone takes a while to be served. So we still have some time until it's our turn. Right away though, the crew handed out half liter bottles of water, which is a very thoughtful gesture on an overnight flight. By the way, these were the headphones I've shown before. They had a surprisingly good audio quality, but that might have been aided by the relatively quiet engines of the Boeing 787. This plane is also equipped with in-flight Wi-Fi, with different data packages available, ranging from around 5 US dollars up to 40 US dollars for unlimited data the entire flight. And now it's finally time for dinner. For the main course, two choices were given, either stir-fried pork with egg fried rice, or what I went with, Viennese veal goulash with butter spätzle. And boy oh boy, isn't that one good looking meal service. Alongside the main course, you had a slice of deep fried chicken breast with a pineapple curry salad for the appetizer, as well as a warm bread roll and some butter. For dessert, some fresh fruit, as well as a tiramisu. All in all, not just a very good looking meal service, also a very tasty one. Metal cutlery was provided too, something that makes everything feel a bit more elegant as well as a dental floss pick. Look at that creamy goodness. That service could easily go as a premium economy class meal on certain other airlines. Afterwards, tea and coffee were offered as well. I always go with some tea after the meal simply because it's hard enough already to stay properly hydrated on a long haul flight. These small cups you always get really just don't cut it, so I'll never say no to a beverage on a flight. Drinking a lot doesn't just reduce the effects of jet lag and fatigue after the flight, it also forces you to get up from time to time to, well, pee. And getting up and with that getting your blood circulation up and running is important on any long flight. Just one little tip for when you're using the lavatory when the cabin is darkened already. Nowadays, planes have sensors in the doors which recognize when you unlock it and it then dims the lights. So wait a second for the light to be dimmed before opening the door as to not disturb the passengers sitting close to the lavatories too much. In the rear galley, the crew prepared a little snack station where you can grab some sour cream and onion crackers, some Japanese crackers, or a Japanese senbai also a type of rice cracker. Apple juice, orange juice and water was also offered, although a flight attendant was available there to assist you with any other beverage needs. Now back at my seat with a little snack and a can of ginger ale, let's settle in for a movie before going to sleep. Eva Air offers a variety of Asian and international entertainment options to watch on demand. From my experience, East Asian airlines often have a rather limited variety of English language content, but Ever Air does not belong to that group. Although the selection is still a bit away from the likes of Delta or Emirates, which are tough to beat when it comes to entertainment variety. One feature I particularly appreciate is the possibility to view the meal offerings on the flight. A handful of games and a map application was available as well. As we're cruising above the Iranian city of Zahedan, about to cross into Pakistani airspace, it's a good time to get a couple of hours of sleep. After crossing the Indian subcontinent, around two hours from Bangkok, breakfast was served. 
Again, two options were offered, either a Western breakfast consisting of scrambled eggs, a grilled pork sausage and rusty potatoes, or a Chinese option, which I went for, with fried noodles with chicken and some bok choy. This was once again served alongside some fresh fruit, as well as salted mustard greens with tofu and edamame beans, which was really good. And you've also got a warm croissant with strawberry jam. Again, a really nice meal service, and I certainly appreciate that breakfast wasn't some small snack box like it is on many European Airlines transatlantic flights, but rather a full hot meal. Of course, beverages were offered with this as well. After that, it was around another hour until we started our approach into Bangkok. As you can see, Eva Air offers a solid economy class product with the meal services, the cabin and its staff being its main strengths. And I mean, those are the most important things of a flight anyway, right? To me, this flight was fantastic and underlines beautifully why I love flying on Eva Air. Is there room for improvement? Of course there is. There almost always is. Some airlines, for example, offer hot towels in economy class, which is particularly nice to get right after waking up in the morning. Or amenity kits with things like eye shades or earplugs. The absence of these is in no ways a significant fault, merely an observation of what also would be possible should Eva Air look to improve its service. Two small things I did personally mind a little bit are that seat reservations aren't free anymore, as well as that neither of the two meal services included a vegetarian meal option, which for people with certain dietary preferences is always good to have. But overall, I wouldn't hesitate to fly on Eva Air again and can only recommend you to choose a flight with them should they be an option. Now we finally made it to Bangkok Suvanapum Airport. want to make someone else's day a little easier, here's a little trick. Use the packaging of the blanket as a waste bag to put your trash in and place it on your seat Thank when you. you leave. That way you make the cleaner stressful job just a Thank tiny you. bit easier. During deboarding, we get a closer look at their you business can. class cabin, which features a staggered one to one configuration with Thank seats you. made by British seat manufacturer Thomson Aero Seating. This particular model is a variation of the popular Vantage XL seat with the overall design put together by BMW Design Works. This seat can also be found on airlines like SAS, which we have also covered in an earlier trip report on our channel. And if you want to know what Eva Air's Boeing 787 business class is like, take a look at that video as well. With that, thank you very much for coming along today's trip. I hope you've enjoyed this video, and if I was able to help you, tell you something you didn't know, or simply entertain you, please subscribe to our channel so we can repeat that experience next week on a new episode of our flight review series, Brutally Honest. And if you believe in our mission to provide first-hand reviews and reports of as many different airlines as possible, and you have the means to do so, please consider becoming a paid sponsor of our channel right here on YouTube at the member tab, with the lowest tier starting at just 24 euros a year. With that, you help us pay for seat reservations like this one, pay for the license to the maps on our videos, new camera gear and more so we can keep working on making our videos even better. Thank you again for watching and coming along and have a great rest of your day.